Okay, this one should be a quick little one today. I just need a little bit of advice, a little bit of help. We've whittled down now to 22 panels that we can squeeze on the roof and we're looking at a peak of 9.46 kilowatts and once we uh, add all the panels up they're on two different orientations so they're going to be on two different strings and uh, won't be overlapping because of the kind of uh, east-west split these are the three inverters that keep being recommended and are supported by our installer. Now from what I understand, Give Energy seems to have a little bit of a smoother app experience, maybe a little bit more minimal and a little bit more modern, whereas the Sunseek experience seems to have all the data and more that you could want, but maybe not quite as polished and as modern looking. But I don't know if this is a bit of a case of an Apple versus Android sort of mentality that maybe the Sunsync is technically more capable, but the Apple, or in this case, the uh, Give Energy is actually the smoother experience and the overall package. So, um, we we're comparing the five kilowatt um, inverters because although we we're looking at 9.46 kilowatt peak with them being on different strings and different orientations um, it's probably more than adequate um, you can see that the sunsink has a slightly lower startup voltage so it will come on earlier in the day and probably keep running till earlier in the evening i don't know how much of a difference that's actually going to make so if you've got any uh, experience in that area then be sure to let me know um, this is the input current per string so you can see that we would be a little bit limited on the Sunsync 5 kilowatt especially on one of the uh, one of the faces of the roof where we're going to have quite a few panels that that could potentially be pushing us right to the limit um, here you can see the out the output it's near as anything the same the big difference comes when we start looking at adding batteries later on down the line if we don't get it done at the same time with the inverter the charge rate on the sunsink is almost twice that of the give energy so the difference between 65 amps and 120 amps that is considerable um, especially if we want to be adding some substantial battery capacity to deal with our heat pump in the winter. But uh, anyway, then there's some the backup power like EPS. And um, I'm not exactly sure on the off-grid, completely off-grid capability of the Give Energy. The Sunsync seem to be uh, quite regularly marketed in that in that area as being fully off-grid. But um, it can certainly support more uh more current and output more power uh, if that was needed um, on the actual unit the sunsinks have a, a fully integrated touchscreen probably not much of an issue for me because it seems like everything can be accessed on my computer through the portal but also through an app on your smartphone all have wi-fi the price difference is pretty much nothing between it give energy and sunsink five kilowatt but really you can see obviously I've added here the 8.8 .8. everyone seems to recommend this um, because it has the same startup voltage as some a lot of the smaller inverters but uh, it can go up to 22 amps per string so you can take a lot more uh, solar input and potentially further down the line if we wanted to expand one of the strings we'd have the headroom there and the capacity to do so um, but it also has massive um, massive jumps up in the amount of output that it can deal with and also the voltage charge rate then comes in at 190 amps now there's not even that many batteries that could uh, take that kind of charge rate and that discharge rate so um, you'd have to uh, have to strategically get the correct battery set up if you wanted to really try and maximize and make the most of this hybrid this uh 8.8 .8 kilowatt hybrid inverter it seems to have a lot of headroom 36.4 amps as you may be able to tell there i didn't put the dimensions did i it is a little bit of a bigger unit and it is quite substantially more money so is it worth it uh I don't know there's quite a few people out there that seem to think this is the one to go for 
this is the big daddy of the moment that seems to have technically all the bells and whistles that you could want or could need um, but probably more than we would ever actually use um, but is it good for future proofing and does it also mean I know in some other areas of electronic equipment and um, especially speaking from uh, an experience with car audio and home audio when you have a lot of headroom and you're not pushing amplifiers to the absolute maximum they do have better longevity and so there is quite a tendency to oversize things and not really uh, flex the muscles of it I presume there's going to be a similar train of thought um, looking through some of the uh, kind of guides and you know the get into grips with things they seem to recommend going for the smallest inverter you possibly can <clears throat> to maximize the use of your solar array even if there's some clipping at the peaks of the day but not many of those guides to inverters take into account the charge and discharge rate when you start speaking about batteries and looking at that further down the line so um I can see there's a lot of people already who have installed give energy inverters and then have had to swap them out because they've been so dissatisfied by the charge and discharge rate and I don't want to get trapped in that and I've kind of in my mind have already kind of excluded the give energy a little bit even though there are still a lot of people who rave about it but uh, quite a few people are talking about having to then have a second inverter installed try and run them in parallel apparently there can be some glitches and some bugs with the software and that's not working as smoothly as it possibly can i'd really like to avoid any of that so i want to get it right first time and if this is something that's gonna be in for who knows 10 15 years and potentially we will expand as we go and of course our energy demands are only ever going to increase uh, going forward especially with growing kids in the house becoming teenagers and I'm sure you people out there with teenagers will be able to tell me all about that anyway I'm completely waffling on this was meant to be a really short one so I'm just going to end it there any advice you've got for me any regrets you've made I have looked at loads of other brands of inverters as well but these are the ones that are both supported by my installer and come really highly recommended so i don't really want to get deviating into any other brands now but leave your comments i read them all i try and reply to every single one and uh, i'm learning a lot from all of you experts that are sharing your wisdom with me so thanks and i'll see you again